Grace, mercy, and peace be to Jesus. Amen. Our text today is the Gospel lesson. Obviously, there needs to be some sort of cultural translation going on here. The, 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 the point of the story is there are ten people waiting for the wedding feast to open, the bride to come, and their, their lamps need to be burning. And five were wise, five were foolish, five understood this to be a long wait, five just thought this would be something simple and easy. And uh, the five foolish ones were found outside the door, unprepared. Jesus is that groom that we're waiting for. We're waiting for that great marriage feast. At the baptism font, a candle is given to the child. Keep your light ever burning. Wait for the marriage feast of the Lamb of His kingdom, which will have no end. We're waiting for that great and final arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb, the flame, is our faith, and the oil in it is where the promises are. The promises of God that keep that faith burning, waiting for Jesus to come. Those promises we believe are found in word and sacrament. God promises that they're there. I've got a question for you. Would you consider yourself a wise or foolish person? Where do you see yourself named today? Have you been paying attention to the oil in your lamp? Now I'm speaking to the choir, so to speak. I'm speaking to those who are here, but you're here today. Are you here? Were you here last week? The week before? How about next week? I'm always amazed at how we dumb down what regular worship is in our American culture nowadays. I yesterday I was, you know, pouring tea at the sauerkraut supper, and I had a few conversations with visitors, and sometimes the conversations would go, oh, what church do you go to? And only once was I surprised that she didn't have a church that she could name, and she seemed to be Christian. But I was speaking mostly to a World War II generation. Anybody underneath that? I always ask that question with a lot of trepidation. In fact, I hardly even ask that question anymore. I remember once Sally and I were in the market for a new car, and so we sat in a, a used Ford Taurus and uh, put on the, the radio. It was tuned to 98.5, the local KTS radio station. The salesman in the back seat was waxing and waiting, or I don't know if that's right, but talking about um, the, 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 the uh, greatness of that radio station, how he listens to it all the time. Obviously a Christian. Oh, what church do you go to? He had been gone, he didn't have one. I hardly ask that question anymore. Going to Word and Sacrament, where Word and Sacrament is celebrated, regular faithful worship is simply not valued in our culture today, even among Christians. And it breaks my heart. And I fear Many of us are the fools in this gospel text today. The catechism calls us despisers. The parable calls us fools if we find ourselves neglecting the oil in our lamp, neglecting to be where word and sacrament is, neglecting the food and fuel that God gives us that our faith can continue to burn and we might be found waiting when he returns. Fools, despisers of God's word and his preaching. Pastor, I don't despise God and his preaching. I just don't like the music. Pastor, I don't despise the church and the preaching. I'm just, you know, I'm busy. You don't know how tired I am. Pastor, I don't despise the preaching of God's word and his sacraments. I read my quarrels of prayer at home. I don't understand what's so important about church. Pastor, I don't despise the word. I just don't like the pastor a whole lot. <clears throat> pastor, I don't despise Sabbath worship. I just don't like the people and some of the decisions the churches have made. The, the decisions the church has made. Okay. We're called every Sunday to gather together. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is where the fuel is. This is the green pastures. 
These are the still waters that our shepherd leads us to, to fuel ourselves by. We're just sheep. We're doing what the shepherd says. He alone knows the journey ahead. He knows the real landscape and the real weight and the real nature of the struggle, the pilgrimage here. It's good for us when our shepherd leads us and invites us to the word of sacrament that we come, that we not be fools, that we don't despise his invitation. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. The Bible makes it clear that our real battle here is against the, the powers in high places. There's a spiritual war going over you for your soul. And the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour you and me. That's the real nature. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not whether you're tired or not on Sunday morning, or whether you like the pastor or not, or whether you like the music or not, or the people of the church or not, or whatever other human flesh and blood reasons we come up with for not being fed, for being foolish, for being despisers. The real battle is long and hard. Our shepherd knows that. Every seven days he invites you here. May God's people be found gathered, taking care of the oil in their lamp. I'd like to lift up a saint of ours that we know, uh, Dolores Cullen. Uh, she's in hospice right now, and she is dying. And uh, she, I asked her a few days ago, um, and I remember the 15 years ago it, um, when we had Thursday morning Bible study together. And even 15 years ago, she would say, you know, I'm not quite sure I'm here, but you know, I'm, I'm ready to go any time. Uh, she's, she's been waiting for a long time with that, that flame burning. Um, now that she's beginning to hear in her gospel lesson, uh, be ready, the bridegroom is coming. She's beginning to hear that. Are you ready? I asked her. Yes, she said. Uh, do you have peace in your heart? Yeah. I praise God. There's no panic. There's no quick scrambling to try to find some, something spiritual here so that she can meet her Lord. It's a solid, faithful flame. I praise God that through her life, he has fed her the promises that have kept the flame of faith going, that soon she will see the bridegroom and God has, will be found faithful to her in a few days, a few weeks, only God knows. But she's at this place in her life, certainly ready to meet the bridegroom with an oil lamp burning, because she was found over in this section for many decades with her sister Audrey and her husbands Ron and George. And every Sunday they were here filling up their lamps. And now she can die in peace. Her prayer finally fulfilled. And she is not going to hear, and I pray to God that none of you will hear this, she is not going to hear in our gospel lesson that, that, that horrible pronouncement I never need. She's going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, come into the kingdom prepared for you. God is good to us. He gives us that lamp and holy baptism. And then every Sunday, the oil to keep it burning. The flame of faith to keep watching for Jesus to come. And it's been a long, long, long time since this parable was first given 2,000 years ago. I don't know when it's going to come. I don't know when our earthly lives will end, yours and mine. But we're to be found waiting. May God be faithful to us as he continues to invite us that our lamps might be filled with his promises. In Jesus' holy name.